Right, my polishing gear all turned up off eBay. The three wheels. That's the that's the thread of the man we made. The wheel just goes onto there. That goes onto the motor like that. There's three different grades of wheels. And a bar of polishing soap. The next job would be to put a hole, a hole in the end of here, so it goes onto the onto the spindle of the motor. If you remember, we we'll set the we we'll set the tail slot over to cut the taper. So the first thing I have to do is set the lathe back up again, so the tail stock is running through centre line of the lathe. And put our centre back in. Make sure that's key. Right, what I did before I set the before I set the tail stock over, I put a paint mark in to make it easier for you to see. So all I have to do, all I have to line the, line the paint mark up again, which is going to get the tail stock somewhere near. See it moving there. So this this will get us somewhere near, and then we'll use a a clock gears to set it up spot on. Right, what I've got now, I've got the paint mark lined up, which means that the the tail stock will be somewhere somewhere near the centre. It'll not be right, but it'll be, it'll be very near. Right, I've got the paint mark lined up in the centre and the back, tail stock centre. I'm going to use my, my boring bar to set it up with. I know it's nice and accurate. Lip it open and then back it off. Just a gentle lip. <coughs> right, put a clock gauge on our tool post. We've got a clock gauge in the tool roller. It's in the tool roller all the time because I use it all the time. Set on centre height as well. I'll fetch the camera in so you can see. Yeah, I'll just zero that clock gauge. It's actually giving the same reading at each end. The idea of the video is to show you how to set the bastard thing up. It's spot on. Zero there. It's slightly out in the centre but the bar could be bent. But it's the same at that end. It's winning. It's winning about a thou. We've got a foot and a half, which is good for me. I'll take my centre out. And put it back where it lives so it won't get damaged. And chuck back on. Make sure the register's nice and clean. Oh, make sure the hole in the chuck's clean. Compress stairs always handy. Drop oil on the end, engine oil won't do any harm. Just nip it on, it's all it takes. Right, so we've got, <coughs> we've got our pointy thing.
Look at the hole in there, the shaft size of the motor is 14mm, I haven't got a 14mm reamer, so I'll let it bore it. Go up in stages. I need the hole to be an inch and a half deep. Set my tail stock, that's the level of the end. These are cobalt drills, nice new ones, really sharp. I keep them just for work on the lathe. But ordinary drills for using hand drills and drill presses, not these. That's inch. Keep backing it off. Put the cuttings. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a half. Go up in three stages. We'll put a formula in first, this is an eight. Pack again with a tail stop. See how it's cutting, you're getting two. The two bits of swarf are coming out the same size each side, that's because the drill's sharp and properly. Bastard. Slow it down a little bit. Right, we're down to full depth, inch and a half. Just check the size of the shaft. We got twice cut one size to the old steel. The nudge is under 14, 14 mil. Couldn't even get red clamp. I've got a lot of more tapper drills, I see what I've got, it's somewhere near 14 mil. Right, I found a more tapper drill, just under 14, it's an imperial size. Slow this down a bit. There's a rule the bigger the drill, the slower you want to run it, the smaller the drill, the faster you run it. I'm going to try it on the, try it on the shaft. Yeah, Actually, that feels pretty good.
so it was full jet. But I do I put a little shampoo on the end of that. Chamfer always looks better, it's a lot safer as well. Sharp edges, cutting your fingers. Just do it by hand. Not going to the edges off. Faster. Don't need chat that box. That'll make the faster chatter. Run a lot slower. That was the two extremes, really fast chatter, really slow, no chatter, nice finish. It's just a case of experimenting until you get the result you want. I don't even know what sort of steel it is, even though it was free. Maybe we'll try it on, it's still quite warm. Nice fit. Couple of grub screws in there. And the wheel screws on. Like that. There you go. Like something of a health and safety for them, really, isn't it? Anyway, it's going the right direction. Water runs out way, so it's going to tighten itself on. Jobs are good. A couple of packing bits so it's up with a nice height to work at. The vase has got it above centre. Nip it up. It's not critical what I'm doing. If it was, I would, I would use a V block, clamp it into a V block. Give it a dad down. Right, that's touching the packing piece. Need to find the centre of it. Right, we need to find the centre of that. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use a wiggler. I call it a wiggler. This is a brand new one, a Starrett one, bollocks. A brand new Starrett one. I got it given, I bought a cheap one. A friend of mine gave us this one. You can tell the difference, it's a really, a really nice bit of gear. Dead simple to use. And the drill chuck. Once again, if it was so really accurate, you'd be using the collet. Just a little nip on that. Sorry to wear. Don't use your finger to square it up, it hurts. For the metal. Push it like that and stop moving. Put your drone out, you use the things God give you. Line it up with your eyes. Camera's at a same angle so you can't get a tall picture, but that, that's in the middle. It's right in the centre of that centre drill mark, or it's near, it's near as it makes no difference for what I'm trying to do. You can actually, you can look at somewhere, I can look at something and get within two or three thou, no problem at all. You get these are great for picking up centre center pop marks and drill holes. See it's a good bit of gear. That one's got a point on, you get different different ends on them. The one there got a ball on, hundred thou ball. 
Right, so now what drills in the centre of the butter bar, I've locked the Y axis off, put a centre drill in. I'm going to put the screws in on the flat and the shaft will be fine. We have one there. We have zero on the x axis. Fetching along 700 so. Another one. Great, I'm going to go for, for 5 mil. Tap and drill for 5 mil, I think it's 4.2. I'll have a look. I keep the right drill. With the top, yep, that's the one 4.2. Drop oil. Five mil top. The wobbles. All I do is turn it off. When it's death throws, in it goes. Top wrench. Turn number two top and we're gonna go right through that'll that'll be fine. Now our batter, batter was 700, 700, yep, let's check, yep, right in the middle, once again, just as it's slowing down, put it off, in, way, straight through, good bit of snap at top. Top of the way back this little box. It will get lost. Let's try and put things in when I finish with them. There's a couple of grub screws there. They'll each shorten what they'll do for they'll do for a minute. I 
think it's definitely an eye protection job this one bits of fluff and shite everywhere polish on it Oh, that's better when you give it a bit of work to do. That's seen that up quite nice. test bar back in the lathe again and what I want to do I'm going to purposely offset the tailstock slightly so I can show you how to line it up. Uh, I did it before I put the, I put the tailstock back, lined the paint mark, or put the, put the test bar in and it was within one thou end to end. I've never ever done it as quick as that before it's always a little bit out. So what I'll do I'll purposely put the tailstock out of alignment. I've never ever put a test bar in and had it perfect like that. And I moved that half an inch to get it right. Right, we've got the indicator on this end. We've set it to zero. And when you look at the other end and see what it says at that end. Ten thou. Fifteen. Twenty thou. I'll move the camera up this end because this is where all the action is going to take place. Right, so I've now got a reading a minus twenty thou. This means that the tail stock is 20 thou too far away from us. So I can find the bastard iron key. Right, I've got the iron key. So what I want, I want the tail stock to come towards us 20 thou. So loosen the tail stock lock off. You can see it moving, 10, 10. Yeah, side up against it. Tail stops locked up again. I take it back to the other end. Here it comes. Right, it's showing plus two thou. Plus two thou means it's two thou. Sorry, it's minus two thou. So it wants to go towards us again, two thou. And we'll loosen that off. Take the side up. These are our two Allen keys, but I haven't got two two Allen keys. Take my tail stuck up. Other end again. Mm, so within a thou, one thou. So I want to go. It, it moves when you just want to loosen the tail stock off, it actually moves slightly.
Ain't a lion to kid. Back to this end. Zero. Spot on. Now according to the clock gauge, the tail stock is in line with the head stock in that position. It may change as it moves up and down the bed. There's not much wear on the bed so it probably won't. What I will do, the next bit of bar I turn, decent length, well any length actually, when I've got it between centres, I'll make it, I'll put a make on as it's been turned and check the readings. The best way to do this would be to take a cut there and take a cut at that end and measure them both. That's the most accurate way of doing it. Um, what I also did on this lathe, I measured on top of the bar and what I found was that the tail stock was actually 5 thou lower you often find it. It's not, as, it's not as important as being away and towards you but what I did I put some I put some shimming between the, the saddle and the top of the tail stock to lift it up 5 thou which is so now it's within, it's within a thou up and down and it's within a thou, in fact it's spot on in the centre of the lathe at that position. Like I say, I'm going to move it forward up and down the bed. The bed has got wear on it, but not that much. It could possibly move. So if, it's, if I turn something between centres, it's going to be critical dimension, critical diameter, end to end. You take a light cut and you measure it with my chromatar and you adjust your tail stock as you machine it down and you get absolutely spot on before you take your final cut. Thanks for watching.